it's no longer the the bad department of the middle school and the bad department of the middle school. Well, we have a bad department of the middle school. We have a bad department of the middle school. So we may not feel like we can have this conversation with the middle school. We also feel like we're the worst person to have a job because I have her own groups. So, personal stories are an equalizer, and they allow you to use the small to get to the big. You know, when you have conversations with some folks, one of the problems you have is that you don't really have to be in a conversation. You're trying to tell them something, and you're just like, because what they're really doing is they're waiting to start a very conversation into your what was supposed to be a mutual conversation. In other words, they think that conversation is like a computer traffic. You can wait for things to merge and then sit in the fast lane and get out of it. And that's not scary. So I'm going to share with you today a few of the questions that I've developed over time that have helped me get to know people more, overcome my own challenges, and they're all for me. It's a good so, this is your idea that is one of life's great gifts. This is the gift that you can give to people who just store them, find them back, you're finding them for them. So, in everyday conversation, if you're able to store them in a real conversation, you give people a chance to break past their walls, leap over the wall, that joins you on the common, and that green line in between you, where you just have to expect some some. some, some uh, as I was trying to work my way through this intellectually, I started to begin to argue with that. I was teaching this. I love word origins of conversation. I was just telling you that conversation is basically calm and it's together like snow and calm and calm. And the verse about poetry was that you were feeling the words, but it turns out that wasn't true. If you look at the origin of the word, conversation, it turns out that it has to do with meaning. Together. They have to know that if you were supposed to hear the information from the past three steps in the world. They also mean how to be company with people. So, conversation can be done. It's shocking to sound it, so it's a bit of rich information and waiting for your chance to drop in your funny line. But you have to be alone and understand people and be more than just with you. I also was quite thankful to discover that in the year 1511, so I'm sure that you all want to be known as very good conversationists. So I just want to introduce you right now to um, uh, seven questions done. Okay? These will uh, give you a little bit of charity uh, to Okay? So first is food. Favorite teacher, forest, film, and culture, for more or fun, fear, and for the win. And we won't have time to get examples on all of them, but we will on the video. So, I'll tell you about that man. He's over here. Y'all play him. Thank you. He's an amazing man that I got a chance to interview him about eight years ago. Uh, he's remarkable. I mean, he's, he's uh, oh, he's done like almost every piece of the list. Written six for a book founded 100 organizations. He's had a profound effect on American civic life in countless areas. Uh, Time magazine named him one of the 100 most influential Americans in the 20th century. He's been interviewed tens of thousands of times on Cure and Cure. Every conceivable answer. What am I going to ask? Community radio, what am I going to ask you about? Mother wrote a book called The Happy Day Kitchen, and he used a lot of my father's things, 
was just looking at me. I'm a massive fan of country western music. And, you know, I always feel a joke about what he does. He used to play country western for backwards world music. He gets your white back and all that. You know, okay. Uh, but they're great songs because they tell stories, and that's what, you know, I'm trying to share with you. Tell me about a movie that makes you cry, and why? Who would you want to play if you were to Um, I was going to share this, uh, with you, uh, but uh, we were actually uh, do a little bit longer. But I will say that I had this one from Fontana to tell me about all the things that make him in common with a character, not a Muslim character in one of the shows he was created. And he was in the movie, and he was in the he realized that he had to know that he, in a long way, he put himself right into the show in the least likely like place. And uh, so, you know, it's an amazing experience that people don't see how they would feel themselves, and you can help them see that. For Lauren and Fawn, uh, tell me about the songs that profoundly remind you of your own youth and why. And also about their fear. Um, a fear they overcame, and also one of the most, the most profound questions I've ever seen people about this point of view, uh, particularly when I ask Americans, is tell me if there's ever a time in your life, if you imagine that every racial background, if you ever totally overcome racial issues. And other people who are very uh, quietly put it into contaminated. And one man who, uh, in fact, gave me my longest answer ever. He spoke for 17 minutes. Uh, this is Wendell Pierce, an actor from Tulsa, the writer, and from May. And uh, we, we had a conversation, but uh, so I talked up here and put it into my time. So this time I think I'm going to talk to you guys. Okay. So you'll have to get this in the right time. Uh, but at any rate, a remarkable discussion with this man who talked about how he could take a place with him to New Orleans and Mardi Gras, and that man would be changed and under those circumstances of being open to share his story and have that man share his story back. That's what could connect them. So we end here with four to win. I'd like to ask people to tell me about the story of one of the most favorite things that we've ever done for you. Or also, a time you discovered that you were stronger than you thought you were. This is what I'm going to do. This is my bun, uh, made in China. Uh, I have to point out that uh, you know, I've got a Euro North American farmer and mother. My father is from Kenya. I have two daughters. And yes, my wife's name is Michelle. Uh, they did try to stop me in the DC from all things that are white. But at any rate, uh, we took a, my mother and I took a trip uh, uh, 15 years ago. We drove to Winnipeg. We drove back to my for booking to the family. And this is a story I don't think I've even told my wife. And um, while we were in the West Coast, we had a lot of time to be told. While we were in West Coast, at the time my uncle and my mother had a heart attack. And we went to the hospital and had to be a few minutes from my mother. We were in the middle of a terrible winter, and I fled back to Edmonton. And quite frankly, I wanted to die. And I was driving as quickly as I could, I think because I was almost hoping this would give me an excuse to stop living. And one of the things that changed for me was, you know, when I discovered that I was going to need to, uh, to, to, to make the eulogy, I had not to find out the facts of my mother's life, I needed to collect the story of my mother's life and all the people that cared about my mother. This gave me food. This is how I found out that I was stronger than I ever knew that I was. But these people didn't even care stories about my life. And I will, I will end with this, which is my favorite story about my mother. She taught an interesting neighbor, cut kids, and one kid every day just like to steal the apple and my mom's death. And then one day my mom finally asked me, what are you doing this for? He said, hey, you know, your name's not me. So I ever said that to my mom. So the next day she's walking along the classroom, she was moving between the desks, and she comes up right next to this kid, she throws him on the ground, and rips up his shirt, gets a belt marker, rips up his belt, property of Mr. Thomas. And then says that you tell your mom and dad why I wrote that. So, to share with you. Their stories about my mom gave me strength. And when you go out tonight and talk with other people, don't just ask them what they went through. But again, don't keep them asking that at all. But ask them to tell you the stories that will connect you truly forever. Again, I'm all of you so 
broken. He is broken for the people. Not just that you can store it, but so that you can truly be a healthy being 